Hey ladies, it's Jasmine here. We are so excited to have you for another Shine Live. Why don't you give yourself a hand clap? Welcome, welcome, welcome. We know that out here in Humble, it sounds like it's about to rain, but we just expect the presence of God to rain down on you wherever you are. Uh, I'm online. I want to see where you are watching from. We're going to give everybody a couple of minutes just to filter on in. Drop in the comments, whether you're online or our LOWCF.org website or on Facebook. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know if you got a snack with you, you got your Bible with you, if you invited somebody to watch with you. And we are going to get into this word and a couple of seconds. I'm so excited. This has been something that the Lord has been placing on my heart for the last couple of weeks. I've been praying about it. And actually, I had a whole nother word that I wanted to share um, at the, the next shine that we were going to have, which will be today. But God kind of detoured me and said, hey, I have something for the ladies. So I'm so, so, so excited. So I have a question for you today. Like, how are you guys doing in quarantine? Like, I don't know about you. But quarantine seems to be dragging on longer and longer and longer. And we don't know when it's going to end. And it's becoming our new normal. And so some of us are doing good. We're like, hey, I'm good being in the house. And some of us are like, I'm just ready to get out. I'm ready to go shopping. I'm ready to go eating. I'm ready to go hang out with my friends. Let me know how you're doing um, in quarantine. And I will see it in the comments. So I'm going to try to look at the comments while I'm talking as well, just to connect with you guys. Hey, Sister Gladys, I see you watching online. I see, let's see who else is on here. I see, uh, hey, Sister Mary, she, she's watching from home. Princess said she's watching from her backyard. I hope you don't get rained out while you're out there. Uh, Sister Tracy, good to see you. Pam A, hey, how are you doing? Aresia, good to see you. I see Jen just popped in. Hey, welcome. Brittany and uh, Latania, she's here. Renisha, it's good to see all of you guys online today. Well, let's go ahead and get started. I don't want to um, hold you guys any longer. Um, if you have your Bibles, your Bible apps, you can pull out and go to the book of Ezekiel, and we're going to be in chapter 22. Hey, Sister Bobby. Hey, Sharon, how are you doing? Thanks for watching today. Go to the book of Ezekiel, and that's where we are going to be today. Um, we're not going to have the scriptures up on the screen for you. I'm just going to give you a reference as you can go back and check it out later. I will read them to you. So, but as all of you know, we are living in some pretty unprecedented times. Um, I have found myself saying over the last couple of weeks or in months saying, Oh my gosh, I never in my life would I think that I would be living through this. From the pandemic through race riots and all these other things that's going on and having to be stuck in our house, I never in my mind would think that in my entire life that we would be experiencing what we are experiencing today, but we are. And um, it caught us all off guard, but it did not catch God by surprise. And so as I was praying, you know, I'm just going to the Lord and I'm like, okay, God, like, what's really going on? Like, I need the inside scoop. I need to know what I need to be doing. I need to know what we need to be doing as a church, as a ministry, and what you want the people of God to be doing. Because obviously, like, this is new. This is fresh territory. And we just need to know, like, where we need to be right now. And, and I prayed and I kept asking God, I'm like, God, okay, what, what do I need to do? What do you want to say? What, what's happening in this season? And I, I was in my bathroom one day and just, you know, minding my own business and talking to the Lord. And God asked me a question that blew my mind. He said, Jasmine, where are the intercessors? And I said, uh, I don't know, God. He said, where are the intercessors? He asked me multiple times, where are the intercessors? And so I said, okay, God, like apparently if you're looking for them, we ain't, we ain't where we need to be. So uh, God just began to minister to me about intercession and what he has called us to do, not only as women, but as believers in this season and in this time. I want to talk a little bit about what is an intercessor as we start out. 
An intercessor is a person who intervenes on behalf of another, especially in prayer. So it's a person who says, you know what? I'm going to go to prayer for someone else. I'm going to go to prayer for my church. I'm going to go to prayer for my sister. I'm going to go to prayer for my family. I'm going to go to prayer for my husband and my children. I'm going to go before the Lord. Um, we, we like to call him a prayer warrior, intercessor, same thing. What are the duties of an intercessor? An intercessor reminds the Lord of his promises until they are fulfilled. So intercessor is not just like, I'm going to go before the Lord and I'm going to say my nightly prayers and I'm just going to, you know, like, thank you, Lord, for my food and all that. But an intercessor is a person that reminds God of what he says until they see that situation line up to the word of God. An intercessor is one who fights and pleads for justice to prevail on the behalf of another. An intercessor is one who builds the wall or a hedge of protection. In such situations, we are standing in between the people of God and their problems or issues to protect them from danger and help build a spiritual wall that will strengthen them to stand in health and wholeness. An intercessor is one who stands between God's judgment and his people and pleads for mercy. So an intercessor is a really important job. And in a lot of churches, if you don't attend Lie of the World, um, you probably have an intercessory team there too. But if you attend our church, you know that we have an intercessory team who prays all the time over our church, over our pastors, over our nation, over our city. And they are some powerful women and men of God. But something that God told me is that the job of an intercessor is not relegated to somebody who's on the intercessory prayer team, that as believers, it is our job to be intercessors. So I'm telling you today, if you didn't believe that you were an intercessor, if you weren't called to intercession, you were called to intercession today. I'm, I'm going to just anoint you today for the gift of intercession, because in this season, in this time, God doesn't just need people and women who are just going to sit around saying these cute little prayers, but he needs women that are going to go before him and lay their faces on the carpet and pray till they see something happens. I don't know about you, but I know that we need to see some things change in our world. Write in the comments some things that you think that we need to see change in our world. So during Ezekiel's day, there are many things that are going on in their society that are similar to what we are experiencing today. So, you know, the Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. So even though we're going through this pandemic time, we're going through all this craziness in the world. It seems like every single day, like if you watch the news, that something cra- something crazy is happening every day. It's, it's enough to get you depressed. And um, it's this is not unusual like if you look back in the bible times people were living lawlessly people were living crazily like the stuff that's going on today is not new and it's, it doesn't take god by surprise and so if you begin to go back in the old testament and you begin to read about the people of god and and, and the, their countries and things that happened um it, it begins to look very similar to what we have going on today in our country and so we're going to look at um Ezekiel chapter 22 today. And I believe that it's going to help us and bless us as we move forward. So go down, if you're looking in your Bible, go down to verse 23. And I'm going to read there. And I'm reading out of the uh, New Living Translation. It says, again, a message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, give the people of Israel this message. In the day of my indignation, you will be pol- a, like a polluted land, a land without rain. Your princes plot conspiracies just as lions stalk their prey. They devour innocent people, seizing treasures and extorting wealth. They make many widows in the land. Your priests have violated my instructions and defiled my holy things. They make no distinction between what is holy and what is not. And they do not teach my people the difference between what is ceremonial, ceremonially clean and unclean. They disregard my Sabbath day so that I am dishonored among them. Your leaders are like wolves who tear apart their victims. They actually destroy people's lives for money. Does that sound familiar? 
and your prophets cover up for them by announcing false visions and making lying predictions. They say, my message is from the sovereign Lord when the Lord hasn't spoken a single word to them. Even common people oppress the poor, rob the needy, and deprive foreigners of justice. Verse 30, he says, I looked for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness that guards the land. I searched for someone to stand in the gap so the wall I wouldn't have to stand in the gap in the wall so I wouldn't have to destroy the land, but I found no one. So now I will pour out my fury on them, consuming them with the fire of my anger. I will heap on their heads the full penalty for all of their sins. I, the sovereign Lord, has spoken. During that time, the priest made no difference between the holy and the profane. All was common and unclean to them. They also turned their faces away from those who were breaking God's law. The prophets took the treasures from the people. They prophesied for money and they prophesied lies to the people. If you go to lie of the world, you know that we call it prophet lying. And there's some, there's some false prophets out there, y'all. So everybody who said they're a prophet ain't a prophet. I'm going to tell you all that now. Uh, they spoke peace and prosperity, but they didn't speak what God was speaking to them about judgment. The political leaders shed blood and were after dishonest gain. The people of the land oppressed and robbed each other and afflicted the most vulnerable people among them. All this craziness was going on in in their land. And this is what God's response was. He sought for one person to stand in the gap. God didn't look for 10 people. He didn't look for 100 people. He didn't look for a church or a congregation. He looked for one person. And he could not find that one person amongst his people. And God is saying today, I am looking for a person. I'm going to bring it down to our terms. God is looking for a woman to stand in the gap. There's plenty of times that God's, if you read in the Old Testament, God said, I'm only looking for one person. So what would happen if every single person who's on this live today would stand in the gap for our nation, for our country, for our, our cities, for our families? What would happen? We would see our world turn upside down. But first, we have to accept the job of being an intercessor. It, intercession, like I said earlier, is not just a job for the intercessory prayer ministry. It is our job as women of God. It is our job to say, you know what? I'm going to go before the Lord in prayer. It is our job to look at our nation and our country and see all the foolishness is going on and say, you know what? I have a remedy for this. And it's getting on my knees before the Lord. I have a remedy for this. It's putting some other things away so that I can touch the face of God and touch the heart of God. It's our job as believers to be intercessors. It's our job as wives to be intercessors. It's our jobs as mothers and teachers to be intercessors. Forget what's going on in the world. What's going on in your house? What's going on in your marriage? What's going on with your children? No one's going to pray harder for your, your marriage, your family, your children than you. And a lot of times we relegate that to putting in our prayer request on Friday night or putting in our prayer request for the prayer team. When God's saying, I have placed you as a woman of God in your house for this time, for such a time as this. We talked about that last time with Esther. God has chosen you for this season. So if he has allowed a situation to happen in your family, he knows that he has planted you there with the power and the anointing to pray until something happens. If you are facing some issues in your marriage, you need to go before the Lord in prayer. You don't need to go talk to your girlfriends about it. You need to go talk to the one who created your husband. If your children are acting a fool, go to the Lord in prayer. And I'm not talking about go one time. Go until you see something happens. Begin to remind God that, God, you gave me this husband. You gave me this child. You promised me this kind of marriage. Begin to remind God of his promises over your life and your family until you see that happen. 
I remember my grandma telling me a story about how she prayed for my dad who was living a buck wild life, y'all. He left the house and was like, forget this Christianity thing. I'm going to do it. I'm going to deal. And my grandma was like, okay, do what you want to do. I'm, I got a remedy for this. So she began to pray. And she began to pray. And she began to pray. And it took years. And a lot of times as believers, we want to pray and we want to see something happen immediately. We live in a microwave society. So we expect things to happen when we pray or expect things to happen. When we ask God, we expect it to happen immediately. And sometimes it does. But sometimes God is trying to build faith in our hearts. Sometimes God is trying to show us what's going on inside of us first. Sometimes we are the problem. And through prayer and intercession, we we realize that, wait, I'm not seeing this thing clearly. Wait, I'm not, I'm not... I'm not seeing this thing through the right lens. So the Lord sometimes has to purify us before he can begin to even work on our spouse, before he can begin to even work on our children, our relationships, or on our job, or wherever we are. God is searching for a person. Secondly, God desires a person to stand in the gap. He's looking for someone to stand in the gap. So when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about a city with a wall around it. And and back then, these cities had these huge walls around this, like similar to the wall of Jericho. They had these huge walls around them to protect them, protect them from enemies coming in, protect them from being attacked. And that's how that city was protected. Imagine there being a wall there with a huge opening. If there's nothing to close that gap, the enemy has free space to walk right in to the city. And right right now, our nation, our walls, there's gaps there. And some of our families, there's gaps there. In our city, there's gaps there. And God is looking for women and men to stand in the gap. And say, you know what? I'm going to stand in the gap. He said in verse 30, I looked for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness that guards the land. I searched for someone to stand in the gap, in the wall, so I wouldn't have to destroy the land. Y'all, we are in some perilous times right now in our nation. Some perilous times. If the people of God don't rise up and do what we have been called to do, we are going to see destruction in our nation at a level that we have never experienced before. We're already seeing things that we've never experienced before, but we are in for a bumpy ride. God already told us it was going to be bad anyway in the end times, and we know that we're, that, that we're in it. But we're going to see things exponentially worse if we don't rise up. God is calling his women to rise up. He's calling his people to rise up in this season. Now, the question is, why couldn't God find one person to stand in the gap? I prayed about this. I was like, God, why could you not find somebody to stand in the gap? And the Lord said, clear as day to me. He said, distraction. He said, while people are supposed to be on their post, they are distracted by the things of the world. And I said, okay, God, what does that look like? God just began to reveal to me that a lot of us, even though we love the Lord, even though we honor God, we go to church, we get on our lives on Sundays, we're, we're still in our life groups and all these different things. But God said, the people of God are distracted. We're so caught up in what's going on on Facebook. We're so caught up in arguing with people whether they should wear a mask or not. We're so caught up in arguing with whether our kids should go back to school. And we are not even seeing what's going on, the bigger picture of what is happening in our nation and the attack that is happening against our nation and the body of Christ and what's happening. And God said the people are distracted. And that's why we have to go back to the foot of the Father and say, God, like, I'm going to tune out all this other stuff. Like, we are consuming so much news of so much craziness happening. Are we consuming that much of the word? Are we consuming that much of the presence of God? You know, I think about 
I love reading about revivalists, and one of my favorite revivalists is Smith, a really, really old, old, old man named Smith Wigglesworth, who died like a long, long time ago, and he was a man that was on fire for God. But one thing that has kind of rang in my mind over this last like pandemic and all the stuff that's going on is the time that he lived in was like the, I think I believe it was like the early 1900s. There was crazy stuff going on too, and he refused to bring a newspaper into his household because he said he didn't want to be distracted by what was going on in the world because he had a mission from God to win the loss. He would not go to bed at night without winning somebody for Jesus. We're so caught up with what everybody else is doing on Facebook. We're not even out here trying to say, you know what, this is a lot. This like if God is coming back soon, we need to be focused on winning the loss and bringing as many people as we can into the kingdom of God. We need to be focusing, focusing on sharing the gospel. And we're focusing on uh, what Will and Jada got going on in their entanglements. Well, we need to be getting entangled in the word and in the presence of God. That's what God has called us to do in this season. God said that we are getting caught up in the civilian affairs. When in the people of God, we need to be focused on what he is saying in this hour. God is raising up an army. And either you're going to be in it or you're going to be left on the sidelines. But in this last move of God, when God moves in this in this next revival, like we want to be used by him and we want to be prepared and we want to be ready and we want to hear what God is saying. And we're in this season because we're hearing so many different things from the left and the right. We have to hear what God is saying. We have to hear what God is saying about who to vote for. We have to hear what God is saying about these different laws. We have to hear what God is saying about sending our kids to church, to school and all these different things. We have to seek the face of God. Don't worry about what someone else is doing. Seek God for yourself. Intercede for your family and say, God, what do you want me to do for my family? What do you want me to do today? What do you want me to do tomorrow? Because like I said, we're living in unprecedented times and we cannot be caught up. We can't be distracted. We have to get back on our post. Because when the people of God are not on their post, that's when the enemy comes in. That's when the enemy comes in. That's when abortion, late term abortion can be legalized. That's when we're we're in a country where like thousands and thousands and thousands of children are going missing, where people are, 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 are trying to lobby for pedophiles to become legal. Like, y'all, this is not okay. Where, where we are in our nation is not okay. But the people of God have gotten off of their post. And we have allowed things to happen in this nation that, that should have never happened. And we blame politicians. We blame people in power when the people of God don't have the power to fix the situation. Because we're not on our knees and we're not praying and we're not, we're not occupying the office and the authority that God has called us to, to occupy. When we pray, that gives us power over principalities and over darkness. We live in one of the highest areas for human trafficking in the nation. And we're in the Bible Belt. Who's going to fix that? God. God can fix that. But the people of God have to say, you know what, God, this is not okay. We can't be apathetic and see things in our nation like that's terrible. Man, the, 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 the world is just cutting up. But as believers, it's our responsibility to stand in the gap. As women of God, it's our responsibility to pray. It's our responsibility not to just pray, uh, uh, 30 minutes a day or five minutes a day or whatever, our morning prayer, evening prayer, uh, uh, dinner prayer, and, and try to get in a little prayer on maybe on, on Tuesdays during noon and maybe on, on, on Sundays a little bit and maybe on Fridays. That's, that's not going to be enough. For where we are right now, that is not going to be enough to see revival happen in our nation. God has allowed us to get to this point so that we can be uncomfortable with what we see happening so that we can get on our face. How much more are we going to allow to happen before we get serious about the things of God, before we get serious about pursuing God, so that we can see things change? We are called to close the gap. We are not called to 
unfruitful arguments. We're not called to be arguing with people online. We're not called to be arguing with our brothers and sisters over stuff that we don't need to be arguing about. We're not called to be supporting ungodly agendas. If the people of God stop supporting abortion and stop allowing it to happen, because there are people of God who encourage other people to go have abortions. Let's be real. Because we, we, we have to uncover some things so that we can be healed. But half of the body, I don't even want to say half because it could be more, it could be less. Part of the body is, is doing things that are anti-God. But because we come to church, we think that it's okay. Adultery is not okay. The word says homosexuality is not okay, but yet it's prevalent in the church. And we don't say anything about it. And God's like, until the church gets themselves together, until we say, you know what, we're tired of this. We're going to see things happen the way that it's happening. This ball is going to continue to roll in our nation. And I know that this is a tough word and I know that it's right and tight, but it's necessary in this season for us to see revival happen. It's necessary. The people of God have to get in position. We have to get in position. We have to realize where we are. We have to realize that maybe there's some things in our heart that's not okay, that we're doing that, that ain't right. Uh, you know, we out here talking about, I love Jesus, but I cuss a little saints that's not the way that's not the way that's that's not how you that's that's not how you close the gap we as the body have been instrumental in allowing the gap to stay open and i believe that god is saying enough is enough when god allowed plagues and things to happen in the bible it's because the people of god a lot of times the people of God didn't have their stuff together. And until they begin to cry out and repent and say, you know what, let's, let me get myself together. That's when they saw God move. Sister Pam talked about this earlier in prayer, but second Chronicles chapter seven, verse 14 says this. Then if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and restore their land. The word says, if my people, that was the second thing that God began to ring in my heart. Every time I guess it said, God, what's going on? What's going on? God said, if my people, he kept saying, Jasmine, if my people, I was sharing with one of my best friends, I said, God is just saying, if my people, if my people. And I know we talk about that a lot, but the key word is that it's his people. He's not relying on anybody else in the world to change the situation. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. He's not looking for the president to humble himself. He's not looking for the politicians to humble himself. He's looking for the people of God. And if we are in a nation that needs healing, that means the people of God are going to have to humble ourselves. He said, we're going to have to seek his face and turn from their wicked ways. He's talking about the people of God, which means there's wickedness sometimes in the people of God. And we have to turn from those things. So the revival and change in this nation is going to start in the house of God. It's going to start with the people of God. It's going to start in the hearts of the people that are in the body of Christ. It starts with us. So right now, while we are in this season, we need to ask God to search our hearts. That's my prayer. God, show me what I need to be working on. Purify me. I need to work on that. Okay, God, what do I need to be repenting for? Because because a lot of us go go day by day in our Christian walk and we don't even we hadn't repented to the Lord for nothing for the last six years. Repentance is still for the believer. We still have to go before the Lord. So, you know, what? I messed up. You know, what? I popped off at the mouth. I wasn't supposed to be popping off at so and so. You know what? I let a couple of words slip. 
Jesus said it wasn't, it wasn't right. But it's, it's not about, oh, Lord, forgive me and keep on going. No, we have to go before the Lord and truly go humbly before the God and say, you know what, God, I want to change. God, I want to be a vessel used for your glory. I don't just want to barely make it in. Like, if we're talking about we're in the end times, the Lord might come back at any time. We don't need to be uh, second guessing if God's going to come and get us when the rapture happens. We need to know that I, like I told my husband, uh, I told him yesterday, I said, well, all this craziness going on, I know one thing. When Jesus comes, I'm going back with him. I ain't going to be stuck here with these people. So I got to do whatever I got to do to make sure that I'm going with him, that my family goes, and that the people that I know go with me. That is what we're called to do right now. That is what the people of God are called to do. But it starts with saying, God, purify me. Cleanse me. God, search me, O Lord. What is in my heart that needs to be fixed? If my people. It is hashtag if my people season. That's what I've coined it. This is time for the church to rise up. This is time for the people of God to rise up and rise up in power. But it's going to cause for us to live for Jesus unashamed. Like we are not living in the time and the season where we can be closet Christians anymore. And some of us want to be closet Christians because we don't want to be canceled in our canceled culture right now because we stand for righteousness. Because if you truly stand for everything that our Bible stands for, everybody's not going to like you. Everybody's not going to be okay when you say, you know what, when you call sin, sin. Like we don't face persecution in our nation, but we're getting to the point as believers when we open up our mouths and we're trying, we're starting to speak against some of these things that God calling sin, we're going to start facing persecution and we have to be okay with that. Because in, in the Bible, they were, they were burnt, they were boiled, they were killed, they were beheaded, all these different things for the sake of the gospel. And we don't even want to tell anybody about Jesus because we're afraid to hurt somebody's feelings. We have to move in power. We have to move in anointing. And we have to say, you know what, if God has called me to say something to this person, like it is God's business if they receive it or not. But I'm going to declare the word of God to them. And I'm going to live an unashamed life. I'm going to, I'm not, nobody's going to say that I was a closet Christian. And we have to decide that that's how we're going to live as women of God. Number three, the destiny of a city or a nation depends on our response. The destiny of our nation, our city, our family depends on our response. It depends on whether we're going to stand in the gap. It depends on whether we're going to say, you know what? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You know what that might mean? It may may say, you know what? We we can't watch this over here no more because that, that supports something that we don't support. We're not going to participate in this because that's, that is not in line with my belief system. Like we're allowing our children and, and, and people to, and our family members to participate in things because that's what everybody else is doing. That is teaching our children that certain things are normal that are not normal. And we have to safeguard our children even more so now we have to safeguard. So moms, especially moms of little kids, moms of teenagers, like who cares if they're upset, but you better watch and filter what they, what they watch, what they do online. I was watching a video the other day of how fast predators begin to email like 12 year old girls on Instagram with sexually explicit comments and suggestions. So while you're letting your kids on Instagram and TikTok, you better be in those messages every single day, seeing what's going on. And you might just need to say, you know what? You need to get off of TikTok or, or Facebook or whatever is, is causing them to be exposed to that. So be prayerful. They got some apps out there that'll help you. If you need some information, holler at me. I'll help you out. That's a side note. But we have to be we have to protect our families. 
We have to protect the people around us from the world. We are the, the pastors of our homes. Our children, our family, that's our congregation. We have to lead them well. So there's some things that we should not be allowing our children to see here, allowing ourselves to see in here so that we can remain pure and holy before the Lord. <clears throat> God is looking for people to stand between the living and the dead to stop the plague. We're going to look in Numbers chapter 16 where Aaron stood between the dead and the living to stop the plague that God sent because of his wrath. Now, at the beginning of number 16, there's a, a man named Korah who was a little upset at how things were going and that Moses and Aaron were like kind of running the show and they didn't want to be, they didn't like all that. So he got him some people, a couple hundred people together and was like, hey, like, let's, let's go. Let's talk to them. Like, hey, we don't like what you're doing. We, you know, we feel like we should be able to do what you're doing. And, uh, you brought us out of Egypt where there was milk and honey and all this other stuff. And you brought us here. There ain't no milk and honey out here. And they were, they were just like, we feel like we could do what you do. Like you offer incense to the Lord. We can do that. Like you go before the Lord, we can do that. And so Moses was like, okay, let's, all right, you want to do that? Let's do that. And they went before the Lord and God was not pleased. And they dishonored God. And what ended up happening is, uh, the, the ground opened up and swallowed up all of those people. So there's some interesting things that happened in the Bible. But um, I want to talk about what happened the next day. Verse 41 says, But the very next morning, the whole community of Israel began muttering against Moses and Aaron, saying, You have killed the Lord's people. As the community gathered to protest against Moses and Aaron, they turned towards the tabernacle and saw the cloud had covered it and the glorious presence of the Lord appeared. Moses and Aaron came and stood in front of the tabernacle and the Lord said to Moses, get away from all these people so that I can instantly destroy them. But Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground. And Moses said to Aaron, quick, take an incense burner and place burning coals on it from the altar. Lay incense on it and carry it out among the people to purify them and make them right with the Lord. The Lord's anger is blazing against them. The plague has already begun. Aaron did as Moses told him and ran out among the people. The plague had already begun to strike down the people, but Aaron burned the incense and purified the people. He stood between the dead and the living and the plague stopped. But 14,700 people died in that plague, in addition to those who had died in the affair of involving Korah. Then because the plague had stopped, Aaron returned to Moses at the entrance of the tabernacle. God is looking for people to stand in between the living and the dead to stop the plague. Even though God's people were acting a fool, Aaron and Moses said, God, have mercy on them. And they stood in the gap to see others saved, to see people's lives saved. Yeah, some people died, but they saved a lot of people, a lot of people. Are you willing to stand in the gap so that you can see other people saved? Are you willing to say, you know what? I'm going to lay down my agenda and pick up God's will for my life and whatever he's calling me to do so that I can see people saved, so I can see lives changed, and so I can see God get the glory out of my life. When you seek God, a lot of times he'll ask you to step out on the water, which is an uncomfortable spot. It's an uncomfortable place to be. Serving God, if somebody told you serving God is easy and following Jesus and faith is easy, they lied to you. They lied to you. 
Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's doing the hard things. Sometimes God is saying, you know what? I need you to move to another state or I need you to take your kids out of this school or I need you to do this or I need you to do that. I need you to go talk to somebody. I need you to go mend the fences. I need you to go repent. I need you to go ask for forgiveness. I need you to go do this or do that. We have to be willing to do what God has called us to do so that we can be in right standing with him. I want to know if you are willing today as a woman of God or man of God, if you're watching, to be an intercessor for not only your nation, but for your family, for to see God move miraculously. We have heard testimonies, even during this pandemic, miraculous testimonies of how God has moved in the lives of people who've been praying and seeking God. If you need God to move in your family, become the intercessor. Sometimes that takes cutting off the TV, getting off of Facebook, getting off of Instagram, and say, you know what? I'm going to get before the Lord. And sometimes it's not corporate prayer that gets you through. It's the time of prayer between just you and God. God's waiting to hear from you. So this is not only a word for you, it's a word for myself. It's time for us as the people of God to seek him like never before. It's time for us to not be distracted and be caught up in the things of this world. It's time for us to be focused on what God is calling us to do. Rise up intercessor. Rise up, intercessor. It's your time. It's your season. You were born for such a time as this. You were born for this time. I want to encourage you to join me next week, which is uh, August, I believe, Monday through Friday, Monday through Wednesday, August 3rd through the 5th, in a three-day prayer challenge. If you follow us online on Facebook, uh, we're at Shine Woman HTX on Instagram. We're at Shine Woman HTX. Um, we're going to be putting out a three day challenge every single day. If you attend Live the World, we'll also send it out through email um, every single day on prayer and things that you can be interceding for. And we're going to go we're going to go through three areas interceding for yourself. And asking God to purify, cleanse yourself, reveal things on the inside of your heart. Interceding for your family on day two. And then day three, interceding for our nation. And I challenge you to uh, take the time that you would normally spend watching TV or doing extracurricular activities. And spend that time during those three days with the Lord. And praying over these things. And I believe that we're going to see God turn some things around. I believe that God is stirring up the body of Christ. And I believe that we're going to see some things happen in our nation. I believe that the greatest revival to hit the face of this earth is about to happen. And we are at the beginning of it. And I'm so excited with what God is doing in this season. So just because everything else is canceled, God is not canceled. His agenda and his will is not canceled. God will get the glory out of all of this. Come on, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you and praise your name for the season that we are in, God. Even though it may be tough, God, we know, God, that you've given us the strength to make it through. God, we know, God, that you are calling us as intercessors to rise up in this season, to rise up and declare your word, to rise up and stand for justice and righteousness, to stand, Lord Jesus, for holiness and the things of your word. We know, God, that you've called us to pray until we see things happen. Pray until we see things change in our world. God, give us the strength to stand flat-footed and be unashamed. God, to be a believer and a Christian and a follower of Jesus. God, give us the strength, Lord Jesus, in this season to continue to move forward and do the things that you've called us to do, God. God, give us the boldness to declare your word. God, give us the boldness, Lord Jesus, to stand for righteousness when righteousness doesn't abound. God, we thank you and praise your name. God, for what you are doing in our lives. And we thank you, God, that revival is not only coming, that it is here. If you're watching today and you say, you know what, Jasmine? I might not be saved. Like, I don't, I don't know if I'm walking with the Lord. Today's your day. 
Today is your day. God's arms are open wide. Here at Shine, we don't let anybody pray alone. So if you're watching, why don't you just join me in prayer as we invite the Lord into your heart? Say, dear Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and that you rose on the third day. I choose for you to be my Lord and Savior. I will forever walk with you and worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're watching and you made that decision, drop your name in the chat. Send us a DM at Shine Woman HTX, or you can let us know. But thank you guys so much for watching. We are so excited for what God is doing in our women's ministry. Come back next month on the fourth Friday. We got a special guest that's going to be with us. We're going to be having Shine live every single month until God tells us to stop. So we are excited about what God is doing. And we are excited that you are here with us tonight. Join us next month for Shine. I love you. See you soon.